Ever look at final results like this contour plot and think, well, this looks non-physical. Here we can see a non-uniform gradient of contact pressure. So why is that? And what are some tips and tricks to get accurate contact pressure? Now, accurate contact pressure between parts is critical to understanding the product performance. Hence, achieving smooth and valid contact pressure results become important. Irregular looking contact results can make the entire result seem suspect. So we want to understand and address such situations if they occur. Sometimes localized contact pressure is real and should be studied more closely to prevent damage or limit the wear to the parts. But sometimes the results are numerically inaccurate and understanding what causes this and how to correct it's important. In this video, we'll be hands-on inside ANSYS Mechanical showing tips on how to obtain smoother contact pressures. Ready? Let's get started. Going back to the model we just discussed, it's part of a large assembly of a processing unit which carries steam from the boiler for direct heating. Such applications are usually seen in pharmaceutical and food processing industries. Now, considering the application, we assign stainless steel 314 to the pipe as it's used for biocompatible or food applications. We assign the mount with the default of structural steel. The interface between the pipe and the mount is defined with a frictional contact of coefficient 0.1 and the mounting face being the contact side and the pipe face being the target side. And we do this to ensure detection of the edge of the mount against the target face of the pipe. We set the contact behavior to asymmetric. Let's now insert the contact tool and check the initial information. We notice only one pair is active for the respective contact and that's because of the asymmetric behavior. Also, we can see the contacts in the closed state so there are no signs of problems with the contact setup. Keeping the default mesh size analysis settings, we move on to set the boundary conditions. We define the base of the mount with the fixed support. Now, considering the superheated state of the steam at high pressure being carried through the pipes for a long time, we assign the whole pipe a thermal condition of 200 degrees Celsius. Now, a point to note here is that the thermal condition is used to assign a body with a known temperature and differs completely from a solution of the temperatures which take place in a heat transfer analysis. The stainless steel will experience thermal expansion from the thermal condition, and since the mount is assumed to not heat, and with no clearance between the parts, the pipe will expand into the mount. This causes thermal stress and the associated contact pressures, which we are interested in understanding better. Let's run the analysis and extract the total deformation, equivalent stress, and add a contact tool. Now verify the contact pair for which the results need to be extracted. Note that the contact tool available in the results section gives us the information of the solved state of the model. Now insert pressure by right clicking on the contact tool and evaluate the results. We see the contact pressure or the contact face generated at the interface. Now can these results be considered correct for making a design change or is this non-physical? If we observe carefully, we see abrupt patches of low and high contact pressure. In fact, this is somewhat expected, and why is that? Return to the contact tool under the connection branch and insert gap and penetration. Now we can see non-uniform distributions of gap and penetration due to the faceting of the coarseness of the mesh. Without even running the analysis, we could have predicted these results to be non-physical. So, to get more insights into the results, let's first take a moment to understand what contact pressure is and why it's important. In an average sense, the contact pressure is the normal contact force over the contacting area. It can be uniform or localized, depending on the forces in contacting area. But more often than not, in general situations, the contact pressure is non-uniform in a contact region for a general class of problems. Analyzing contact pressure results is important in many mechanical systems, including but not limited to brake systems and automobiles, engine camshafts, various kinematic mechanisms, interference fits, industrial systems, etc. Now, accurate contact pressures are needed to check if the surfaces will maintain proper contact, but not have such high values as to cause parts to wear unevenly or prematurely. Contact problems, especially frictionless or frictional contact, are challenging because contact areas can change during the analysis. 
The contact is evaluated not over an entire area at once, but it's evaluated at each contact detection point. Thus, non-smooth results can occur due to mesh faceting or as parts slide or come in and out of contact with one another. Now, before we continue, it's worth noting and discussing asymmetric and symmetric contact. Asymmetric contact is specified to set detection of the contact surfaces from one part from penetrating the target surfaces of the other part, but not vice versa. On the other hand, symmetric contact sets up an additional reversed pair that effectively prevents either surface from penetrating the other. This is especially helpful when both sets of surfaces may have sharp features. Now, while symmetric contact can be useful in certain situations to ensure complete contact detection between the parts, regardless of the contact and target specification, it is challenging to evaluate the contact pressure as the values are reported on both sides. Now, there's no straightforward way of reporting the actual contact pressure when you have values on both sides. So that's why asymmetric contact is recommended if you have a need to evaluate contact pressure on the surface. Let's now discuss some tips on obtaining smooth contact pressure. The first is mesh refinement. A fine mesh increases the locations where contact calculations are performed. We can imagine that if you have a coarse mesh, we have few contact detection points, so the results can be spotty. But a finer mesh will give us many contact detection points to capture the contact area more accurately and also the contact pressure distribution. It's worth noting the fact that mesh refinement is considered more as a general principle that applies throughout finite element analysis, mainly because it's important to assure that our analysis results are not sensitive to mesh density, i.e. we should obtain a mesh independent solution. Okay, coming back to our model, let's now duplicate system A and open system B. As discussed, we'll refine the mesh to increase the contact detection points. We define the pipe with element size as shown. Let's now generate the new mesh. We see the elements are well defined with a fine mesh and their corresponding contact detection points at the interface as compared to the default mesh. Now coming to the next tip, which is the use of nodal projected normal from contact detection method. This method enforces contact constraints on an overlapping region of contact and target surfaces rather than on individual contact nodes or gauss points. It passes patch tests and generally offers smoother stress distributions for both contact elements and underlying elements than the other detection methods. In short, the patch tests essentially confirm the numerical solution matches the exact solution for some known class of problems. The contact force is determined using this method very smoothly during large sliding, and the forces do not jump when contact nodes slide off the edges of the target surfaces. Furthermore, for true surface-to-surface -surface contacts, this method provides good results with minimal contact pressure spikes at nodes. Convergence behavior is also better if the mesh is adequately discretized at the contact surfaces. However, for best performance, use a similar mesh size for both contact and target. Okay, now let's set the detection method for the contact. In the advanced section of the details of the contact, we set the detection method to nodal project normal from contact. This will help to ensure smooth contact pressure distribution. Having incorporated all the tips for obtaining smooth contact pressure, let's solve the model and evaluate the results. Looking at the contact pressure, it seems this provides a more accurately physical representation of the system. Comparing the results of system A, we've obtained smooth regions of contact pressure over the surfaces. Not only smooth contact plots, but a more accurate value of the contact pressure is a great outcome of the changes we've implemented. This physically represented result can provide a great design insight and can be considered for making any necessary design modifications. Refining the mesh further may result in additional improvements in the accuracy of the contact pressure. Having addressed the importance of contact pressure and tips on obtaining smooth and accurate distribution, let's now quickly summarize. Accurately determining the contact pressure value is important to ensure the surfaces will maintain proper contact and will not wear unevenly or prematurely. Contact problems are complex, especially when the areas during the analysis change, hence getting smooth contact pressure is inherently challenging. 
So while we may wish to evaluate accurate contact pressure values and distributions, this is not always an easy task. Further, mesh refinement increases the number of contact detection points, helping us determine accurate contact pressure values. Finally, the nodal project normal from contact detection method provides good results with minimal contact pressure spikes at the nodes, often without needing to refine the mesh considerably. Thank you for watching and do check out our other courses and content to discover more useful learning resources.